The Very Serious Crafts Podcast is on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash serious crafts to support our podcast, find out about our Patreon half-stitched episodes, and more. Hello, and welcome to Season 5, Episode 4 of the Very Serious Crafts Podcast. I'm Molly from Wild Olive. And I'm Haley from Red Handled Scissors and the Bones and Bobbins Podcast. Today, we'll be talking about things we've tried but just didn't like. Yes. Not everything clicks, exactly. No. Despite our um, best efforts. <laughs> So if you've been listening for a while, you may remember my dearly beloved but now departed cat, Simon. And Simon, every time he encountered something he just wasn't that into, he would lift up a paw and just shake it at me. <laughs> and um, that that is what I want to do to these things. Just That's... like... Yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds about right. Um, yeah, I I can't say that I have a long list of things where I am unlikely <clears throat> to ever return to them. Yeah, there's a you know there's a lot of things where if if, if I'm unlikely to return to them, it's because time just is the factor and other things take precedence, but. Sometimes you have things where it's just, nope, not, not interested. <laughs> so that's more where this falls. Yeah. I mean, I have, oh, I just saw your second one on the list and I concur. <laughs> um, yeah. It, there, I've tried to like some of these things. Yes. I, I've tried. And it isn't that I have seen them and then been snobby about it. No. Well, one of them Maybe. might be. Yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah. I just... Uh... Yeah. 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 Um, so... But... Go ahead. Before we actually jump into discussing the things that make us shake our paws... Um, <laughs> We want to give a shout out to our many serious friends of the Very Serious Crafts podcast who are supporting us at patreon.com slash serious crafts. Many thanks to all of you. Thank you. You are the best. Yes. And we love you. Yes. We love, all right. we love hearing from those folks too. So It's all right. true. All right. So hit me. Hit me with your first thing. <laughs> Well, this is the, the thing that is my favorite part about what we're going to talk about is that we independently both had <laughs> this same thought. <laughs> yes. And I'm, I'm both surprised and not surprised. Also, I'm just going to say my mother was surprised when I told her that this was the top of my list for things that I've tried but wouldn't really want to do again. And that is needle felting. Yeah. I... I've tried it. In fact, Me too. I've even I've even tried it more than once. I've tried mm -hmm. different kinds of tools. Yep. I took a class. Mm -hmm. I've purchased the things. Oh, I have the things. Mm -hmm. Yep, there's a yeah. collection of the things. Yeah, and it's a nope for me. <laughs> oh, so many people make such amazing. Oh yeah, objects like mind blowingly detailed like photorealistic things yeah that, and like what and also on the on the flip side there are some people that do really cool kawaii things and yeah um i the one of the first people that came to my mind is uh her, her real name is brandy but she goes by cuckoo Bee, and she has made needle felted sculptures of cartoon characters like from the show gravity falls and and other things like really cute things because you're creating them three-dimensionally and i love them i'm just really not interested in making them no um my friend moxie wrote a 
book on needle felting probably a decade ago and sent it to me along with supplies and she makes amazing art installations yeah that like I love to look at them and like she also makes little monsters and oh, cute I am utterly and completely charmed but that needle is barbed <laughs> Yes, it is. And that hurts when uh-huh. you stick yourself with it, and you will. But here's the, the interesting thing. The first time that I tried needle felting, um, Clover released some needle felting products. They had a little base that looks like a brush that you can set oh, things I've on, got right? One. Yep. yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. So they had that. And then they had a little spring needle tool. Yep. Where it has like a little covering so you're less likely to stab yourself with it. I can assure you that that does not prevent it because <laughs> those sure. are the tools I started with. Yes. Well, and that's <laughs> the thing is that if you're holding a thing and stabbing it repeatedly with a needle, it's, you know, you're still, even if the guide keeps you from poking yourself with it not in use, in use, you're still going to, you could still do that. But, yeah, and you and you do have to poke it vigorously yes. enough to cause those fibers to interlock. Yes. Because, like, you can tamely poke at the thing, but it's not going to do what you want it to do, ultimately. Right. And you will spend far longer doing it if you are being extra, extra careful. But then at the same time that they released those tools, they also released their own line of roving to to do the needle felting with. Oh, yeah. But, it, and so I made with the, I think I bought it, I think I bought all of the tools for it at a like a little, a local quilt show and there were vendors there. And so I had all the little things and I bought like two packages of the roving in like varying shades and i made a little tiny easter bunny with some easter Mm -hmm. eggs and i still have them i will try and get i'll try and get a photo for the show notes because you know they still exist Mm -hmm. but they were it was really hard to work with and the fiber itself was um it was smoother than a lot of roving is making it it took longer to felt um, as a result of that So then when I found out that that was part of the problem, I thought, ah, that's maybe why I didn't enjoy this. So I signed up and I took a needle felting class at a local like farm and shop that does um, these kinds of classes. And they present classes at, you know, libraries and different things around the area. Really charming. I had a very nice time at this class where we made little felted fairy dolls and my friend that I went with I think she and her husband had taken a class to make a little nativity set a felted nativity set now that's cute cute. yeah um I think that's really why my mom was the most disappointed that I was saying that I didn't really have any intention of needle felting is because she's been holding out hope that I would make her one of those nativity sets at some point well she sure does have a collection (laughs) you're almost obligated I know I know but so when I went there then we were using just like the single barbed needle and I bought a, a set of those and it's a little bit nicer. I also have rolls of felted like pieces that you would use to like cut out and felt onto things. Like, yeah, like you know, as a background. Right. I just don't love this process. And so I don't think I've used those nicer needles since I bought them. But I have all the stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I have I have all of the stuff as well. And Moxie also sent me some like a really nice assortment of roving. And I keep thinking I'm going to go back to it because yeah. I like how it looks. I find it to be very satisfying to hold. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Oh, I should also say, because I think that I am legally obligated to disclose this, all of the felting 
products that I got that were Clover, I got from Clover. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. In exchange for frying them mm-hmm. and talking about them. This was like a decade ago, but yeah, just saying. Um, I, I did not pay for those. Yeah. So, um, and I also did not pay for Moxie's book, but it was a personal yes, that's, gift, that's not obvious. a... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I really, like, I am so impressed by the things that people can make in the shapes mm-hmm. that the shapes that things can hold. Yeah. But yeah, I I hate it. I hate doing it. Yeah. I also don't think three dimensionally as much. So that's that might come into play, but I don't know. I I like stabbing I fabric for stitching, but I just don't like stabbing needle felting. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think it's that it's not organized. Yeah, there, it's that very, it's, it, it, like, I don't like, um, seed stitch. Okay. The, isn't yeah. that, that's just the Where it's like scattered, yeah. 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 I don't like that at all. Yeah. Ever. And it's also very much one of those things that you have to, like, watch it come, come together and do a little bit of this over here and then add a little of that over there. And, um, yeah, you, you have to play with it as it, as it goes, which is, it could be really fun to some people. I don't know. It's, it is not my jam. I mean, some people super like it. Yeah. And I, I'm impressed with their work. Yeah. This is one of those funny things where it is absolutely not a judgment on the craft itself. Yeah, no, no. Like we really, we both really like the results. Mm -hmm. It's just the process and usually it's kind of the opposite yeah (laughs) if I'm not gonna like something the process is usually fine I just don't like how it looks yes yeah um yeah I I also you do at the end you end up with a felt object that um sits out and it collects dust or in the case of that fairy that I made it collected carpet beetles and I had to throw it away (laughs) I needle Felted a um, tiny version of Simon the Cat mm-hmm. out of Simon's hair yeah. because I am that kind of weird. <laughs> and um, it was lost in the mothing. Yeah. 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 So these things, they happen. They do. They make good um, tree ornaments. Yeah. If you're going to pack them away. Yeah, there you go. But yep. for having I out think they're a thing the that open. wants packing away, it... <laughs> not a thing that wants to be, or they want to be enclosed in a display case. There you go. I would think yep. if you're making like a sculpture out of needle felting that you've yep. put a lot of time and effort into, and you, I mean, at the very least to avoid dust, that's a good idea. So yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> what, uh, what else have you tried and you just don't like along a similar line i really really don't like to make amigurumi objects Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i do not like the small scale knitting or crochet yeah i'm perfectly capable of doing it i have done it and i have made cute things yes but i i just i don't love it yeah yeah. It's fiddly, and I don't get as much satisfaction out of it, um, out of the finished object, as I would require to do something that fiddly. Yeah. I, I have only done, I've probably only done a handful of pieces. A handful. <laughs> They're small. <laughs> They've been in your hand. Um, <laughs> uh, but the pieces that I've wanted to make... The first thing that came to mind is a little, um, a little panda bear that I yeah. know that my sister would love. But the the problem that I my biggest issue with Amigurumi, which I would I would 
I'll still end up making some of these pieces at some point, I'm sure. Um, I haven't given these up, but a lot of them, you make a lot of little pieces and then you put it all together and it's the putting it all together that, first yeah, of all, I'm not the, into it. The tiny pieces as it is, you're, you know, it doesn't take very long to make the arms and legs of this panda bear, I'm sure. But then after you've done that, then you have to like put it all together and you've got all the ends and it's, yeah. it is a, it is an ordeal. It is an ordeal. And I mean, it can totally be worth it. I mean, I, I think yeah. most of us have seen the stop motion animation that Mochi Mochi Land Oh makes. my goodness, yes. Um, and <laughs> I have, uh, she gave me one of her kits at, what was it, Vogue Knitting Live okay. many years yeah. ago. And it was the first thing, it was a cat. Um, mm-hmm. And it's the first thing I ever made Yeah, that was in that style. And it was delightful. And the things that she makes are wonderful. They're enchanting. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to make them. I mean, and yeah, I feel like this is another one of those things where I'm super impressed by the talent of people who do or who make them well and design them well. Yeah. Like um, Allison from Crafty is Cool. Yeah. She makes, <laughs> like, yeah. if you don't know, I just go Google. Yeah. Google it right now. Yeah. Because I'm going to need you to see, well, specifically her most recent one, which is Snoop Dogg, because I can't <laughs> stop laughing. <laughs> but, like, she just makes spectacular things. Yeah. Um, at the same time, when I wrote my cross stitch the golden girls book she did a um crochet um the golden girls yeah also yeah and well they came out at the same time and it's actually her pattern that is now a pattern for making um i think you can make a bear cub or an elephant or an alien that might look very familiar to star wars fans and, oh yeah, and I have made <laughs> that, <one>. that pattern, <laughs> which is um, very cute. It is, and it is. It's much a much larger scale, so that helps. There's still a lot of pieces to it, but you're working with bulky yarn, and so it's, yeah, they're not teeny teeny. Well, most of hers not are all of right her, her stuff. Yeah. Right, her most of her dolls are smaller, much smaller, but this one is is a little bit larger, and I also. Um, Okay, let me, I want to make sure that I get the, the designer's name correct. But, um, yeah, uh, Amy, who is Curious Papaya, she does a lot of really cool amigurumi that is large scale, like Mm. jumbo boba tea or, um, a giant sushi roll. And... Is it still amigurumi if it's gigantic? I... I don't think I know what that word means, actually. Okay. The, let me... the, the translation. I know what it looks like, but I don't know what it means. Yes. Yeah. It, it does, it is often used um, to mean small, except that it's, it's literal translation is like crocheted or knitted stuffed doll. Oh. Or wrapping is the word that is used to represent knitted or crocheted. But um, it can be there it can go. be larger. So yeah, um, all right, cool. But if you so make that it makes sense. if you make it bigger, even if it's intended to be made yeah. small, it's the tiny things that yeah I find to be fiddly. Yeah, and if you were to just size your your yarn and your hookup, you could probably make the same thing to uh, just in a a slightly more pleasant <laughs> size to work in. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, that goes back to things we've talked about a whole lot, um, like just how customizable and versatile, Yeah. Uh, well, knitting and crochet, like yarn craft specifically are. Once yeah. you have the skills, then you generally speaking can change the rules to fit what you want to make. Yeah. Um, and substitute things in and um things like that yeah 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 so changing gears from things that we really like the outcome 
Yeah. But but not the process. Mm-hmm. Um the the flip side of that is for me diamond dots. <sighs> and I <laughs> the, my my small caveat here is that I I haven't actually I haven't truly tried diamond dots. I have a large kit because I thought I needed it for a like a, a writing assignment and that ended up getting canceled. So I have this mm-hmm. now, <laughs> this enormous kit that I've of course opened all the things. It, ca- it cannot be returned. Um, I also bought some of the little jars of the individual colors thinking that I would mm-hmm. be able to do the thing. And the components were a little bit confusing. And I Mosaics for dollhouses. Yeah, that would work for that. Flooring for dollhouses. <laughs> that would be really cool. Oh. Tile work. Or, um, but... When I guess you, I need to make a doll hat now. When you, <laughs> perfect. So I haven't truly tried this project. I might actually hate the process as well, but I, I just don't love the look of a finished diamond dots. However, I think that the process of putting the pieces in is quite appealing to me. Like, oh, I, I know that I like you. I yeah, like because the colors it, I like mm-hmm. the. And the it's got like a little tool and, and it's got like wax it. to do the thing. And then you yeah. touched in the, oh, uh, mm-hmm. but yeah. Yeah. The process is wonderful. I just, I don't know what to do with the thing at the end. <laughs> I don't want a sparkly starry mm-hmm. night hanging on my wall at the end, even though yeah. I like starry night as a painting. And I'm sure that if I ever find it in my schedule to start working on this thing, giant kit that I have that I I'm sure that I'm going to enjoy working on it but I mean I have been gifted a finished product yeah from a family member and it's they, really cool they it's are amazing. really cool um and in the right setting yeah it would it would and will look very neat mm-hmm. it's just that I think it walks this might be like an I was born in the 80s thing. It walks a little bit too close to that bedazzled line. Yes. Yes. Then like bringing in some of the unusual like velvet paintings that you would see. A lot of the <laughs> styles of the diamond dot kits feel like that. But but mushrooms even if you... under black lights. Yeah, exactly I that. I hated those. Even they if you really messed with my texture issues, um, like <laughs> my autism was like, excuse me, absolutely not. Yeah. So even if there's ones that you like, like there's a point where if you really enjoy the process of them, how many of the finished product do you need? And that's true with a lot of crafts. I'm not going to say that this is limited to diamond dots, but there is a, a point of, especially the large ones, if you like working on them. I would be happy to hear from listeners. If you enjoy doing diamond dot paintings, do you have a thing that you do with the finished project other than just hanging your, filling your home with them? It would be interesting if they did like a cross stitch style version, like with little like X's, X tiles. I wonder if that would. Interesting. I may have just made them a million dollars. It's possible. Um, (laughs) <laughs> maybe but i think that might look interesting but without like the shiny yeah texture i think that might be it i think it's the shiny texture and like if there were more than just like canvas background if you could do it on different things or like you know make mugs or Mm -hmm. there are some where they're making like they're like kid size kits so they're smaller and they're designed Mm -hmm. to be like stickers or i'm trying to think what else they or like patches or things like that um interesting i don't know how well they would hold up though with like wear so i don't know probably not well they're not really designed for that but ultimately is this designed to be a process craft more than a product craft not really but kind of i don't know i think that it just depends very much on your personal yeah or okay 
Yeah. And mine aren't, like, I don't generally speaking like shiny things that aren't rocks. <laughs> yeah. Um, or, you know, iridescent beetles. So I, I'm just not the target audience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm not the target audience for similar things um, in, like, dual remaking. Mm-hmm. So I want to like wire work. Okay. I really want to like it because I have 1,037,000 semi-precious gems. Uh-huh. And I know that I could make some really intricate, like, lace-inspired wire work jewelry with them and i hate it (laughs) and like there are some things that i could see doing like um say decorative filigree around hair work Mm -hmm. or something like Mm -hmm. that because you know yeah me yeah um (laughs) but i just like people do such cool things and i just can't wear it yeah i just don't like it and i even i can appreciate how cool right the things that people make are and like things that look like uh i especially like lord of the rings inspired like brooches and um and buttons and like Mm -hmm. sweater clasps and things like that like and you know even like head pieces i actively like them yeah i just can't yeah and i i don't know why i think that i would enjoy making them and i really appreciate people who are very skilled at it Mm -hmm. but i think it might just be that i i have a very specific idea about what rings should be Mm -hmm. like what they should consist of and the band needs to not be flexible for me and so even if you like hammer harden the wire work which I'm also not entirely sure I understand how that works okay I have the equipment I've got all of the equipment (laughs) Um, yeah but I just I think that I could enjoy doing it and I think that I could wear it in like a cosplay or Dungeons and Dragons scenario. Okay. I don't, I just, I can't make it work with my look. That absolutely makes sense. I hadn't really thought about this particular craft before or technique before you brought it up, but... I will say that any time that I have needed to do some kind of wire element to whether it's, you know, some other jewelry related thing or something that needed some wire stuff, I find that I am not particularly good at managing that. I always end up bending things in ways that I don't want them bent. And once you've done that, it's never quite the same, you know, like getting it like reshaping it or like at least getting it to a point where I feel like, oh, that actually looks like it was made by someone who knows what they're doing. I have never achieved that. So it, yeah, you need an actual like bench with a vice so you can pull it around curves and and stuff like that. Yeah. And you definitely need to know what you're doing. And I, I definitely, I can say I spending the time to try to master that skill not appealing to me. Oh, I think I would love to spend that time. I just <laughs> don't. I, but I just would not yield. Yeah. It's similar with the diamond dots. Yeah. I, I think I would deeply enjoy, like, my brain would light up with delight at putting little tiny squares yeah. where the little tiny squares go. Like, right. I know that I would like that. It would be like little hits of dopamine every time. <laughs> um, but nope. Nope. Yeah. Nope. 
Yeah, I... I don't know. I I did actually, before we talked, I, I looked through some of my cupboards thinking, I'm sure that I have more supplies in here for things that I have not, that I have not done a lot of. It's been ages since I've done a lot of things. I wouldn't mind going back to them. Things like stamp carving or... Um, oh, I like stamp carving. I do like stamp carving. Because I like to do black prints on fabric. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's been it's been a long time. For the most part, though, I would say... I enjoy, I enjoy most of the things that I have tried. And then every once in a while, there's just one of those ones that I just go, yeah, no, I yeah. don't think that's, I don't think that's going to work for me. It's always the, the saddest after you've purchased a, a large quantity of <laughs> materials thinking you're going to love it. You're talking to someone with both autism and ADHD. Yeah. Yeah. The collections of things. That like, I have absolutely handed people entire complete kits of a hobby. Yeah, like yeah. here have an entire hobby. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, you know what I want to like, but I just don't. Bookbinding. Ooh. I want to love the binding stitches i think they're beautiful they are and i just nah (laughs) i (laughs) like i i really appreciate the skill i love looking at old hand bound books um yeah like they are works of art and one of my favorite humans, my uh, former German professor and now just friend that is family. Yeah. Um, Janet makes beautiful, beautiful, well, I mean, notebooks, just any number of things. She once hand found a bunch of photos from a German theater production cool. that I was in which was really cool it was one of them was black light theater so every oh, everything wow. glowed yeah um yeah it was it was very fun um if you are in the German theater scene it was Nacht mit Gästen but um I if I, if you're in the German into the German theater scene, and you know what Haley's talking about, you have to identify yourself, please. Okay? Yeah. Please do. Um, the other I... half was Die Schwarze Spinner, if you <laughs> also want. Uh, perfect. Um, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. Would um, you like to know what both of those mean? <laughs> or shall we just No, it's ride? way better not knowing. It's way better right, not sweet. knowing. Um, I, I did <laughs> once... One of my favorite projects that I've ever been commissioned to do, I was actually asked to do a book binding tutorial but where I made an entirely hand embroidered fabric book cover and it was for Molly Makes and so I designed That's cool. it was very cool so I designed it so that it looked like um it was inspired by a fa- by fairy tales so it had like a snow white like silhouette uh, on the on the cover and did some embroidery that went on the spine as well and so then made all of the signatures for inside and then used a book binding stitch to go through the fabric cover so it became like a little blank uh blank book it was it was a really cool kind of a project to do i like that in fabric like i yeah. would totally make needle books like that yeah i think it's just i Doing the it whole, might be a texture thing with the paper. Yeah, working with the paper, you feel it in your hands. It is a weird kind of a thing that I don't think I can understand you not liking it. And then the component of um, making covers that are like bookboard wrapped in fabric or other papers and things that part is less appealing to me. But the stitching itself, I. I do enjoy, but yeah, it's a, there's a texture thing there. Yeah. Weirdly, yeah. that part is more appealing to yeah. me, the book board stuff. Yeah. But that's because my first career was in book publishing. Yeah. And when somebody got a hardcover embossed fabric mm. book cover under their dust jacket, 
Yeah. Like, that's pretty fancy. Yeah. <laughs> you know that's mm-hmm, that's like, a special book. <laughs> somebody was expecting to make some money. <laughs> I mean, my first book is a book board yeah. covered um, in, like, paper. Yeah. It's not fabric. And, and I thought that I was amazing yeah um it's pretty improper special cross stitch available wherever books are sold <laughs> yeah that's right yeah, yeah. um but yeah oh that, that is touching my butt <laughs> <laughs> uh, i think i think whatever cat it is they're saying okay you can be done with this episode now <laughs> okay fine <laughs> uh but oh. no i mean i i uh I will continue to try new crafts and see if I like them. And hopefully I won't drop a fortune on the ones that I don't like. But, you know. Oh, we will. It'll happen again. I know. Or we'll get hired to make something. That That's the ideal scenario. Yeah. We get hired to, to make a thing mm-hmm. that allows us to try a thing. Yeah. And then if we don't like it, it's then, fine. I mean, whatever. We've still done the work. Yeah. Now that because I think about that's there's fine. there's probably a few projects out there that that would have fallen into this category from that that exact situation, but yeah, apparently I, just I put them out of my of mind several too. But we'll just <laughs> we're not going to talk about we'll them let now. It ride. <laughs> no. Um, uh, and on that note, thanks for listening to the Very Serious Crafts podcast. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Serious Crafts and on Facebook at Very Serious Crafts. You can also find show notes and all things Very Serious Crafts at Mm VerySeriousCrafts.com. And finally, (laughs) if you're a fan of the Very Serious Crafts podcast, please leave us a five-star review on whichever platform you use to listen to podcasts because good ratings help us show up in recommendations which helps more people who love crafting find us hi friends thank you for <laughs> listening to this and i you really you missed a Haley's face as she held it together during that entire thing <laughs> even after i made some goofy sound and but she's a professional so professional she's a very serious crafting podcaster and that worked Ooh, out really well. It's been a while since we've made one of those jokes. Yeah, it's true. Very, Very serious. serious. Yeah. Okay. No. All right. <laughs> All right. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>